I don't know what's going on. It must be my internet. So I have no long idea how long we might have dropped out of this, but apparently we dropped out of this. Okay. So woe is me for I sojourn in Meshach, for I dwell among the tents of Kedar. And then we brought up too long has my soul had its dwelling with those who hate peace. So why, why has he said twice his soul? What do you think is not feeling at at peace? Mm -hmm. The soul. Yeah. So the soul, I think, refers to the inside person, you know, your emotions. And then it goes on here. So, um, Adrian, verse 7. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Okay, yeah. So so he's living he he really wants to live in peace, but the people he's living with are at war. How will that apply to us in the day and age that we live in? Well, do any of you ladies want to go to war with anybody? No. <laughs> Hey, Adrienne, you have an, uh, you have a downstairs neighbor. Um, do you really have a problem with having a downstairs neighbor? That's not the problem of having a downstairs neighbor. No. So in other words, you would prefer to live at peace with your downstairs yes. neighbor, right? Right. But that's yeah. not always the way. Uh, sometimes we are um, in neighborhoods where we'd really like to live at peace, but um, people have loud motorcycles or have parties late at night that wake us up. You know, we'd rather live at peace, right? But this is, this is a little, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Adrian. Hey, can, can anybody else think of anything about our, uh, that, those were just examples that popped to my mind. Um, because they're fresh in my mind, but in the current um, cultures that we live in, in the world. I think this is descriptive of our spiritual warfare that we're in constantly. Right? And it's counterculture in every way, mm -hmm. wherever we go. Mm -hmm. Right? We're not swearing, they're swearing, or they're lying, we're trying not to lie, right? Like, it's constant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes, indeed. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are at war. So let's go back to the beginning of the psalm then. What does it say at the beginning there, Suji? On 120? Yeah. The beginning in my trouble, mm -hmm. I cried to the Lord, and he answered me. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of going in a, I just brought it around to a full circle. The, per, the person writing this psalm <clears throat> really wants to be at peace, to live at peace. But the milieu that he lives in is, is always crying for war. And, you know, <clears throat> I was just thinking that culturally too, you know, like um, live, you know, I'm not ramming anything down your throat. Why are you trying to ram stuff down mine? <laughs> right? I mean, I'm inviting people to uh, get to know Christ and to get to know their creator. Um, uh, but I'm not ramming that down their throats. <laughs> but they're ramming every other evil thing into my family, my culture, life. And that's, that's just the way it is. That's the way life is. Okay, good. So now I'm going to provide a little musical entertainment for you because I learned a wow. very nice, I, I, I learned a very nice song. Oh, long, long time ago, back in the eighties, um, that has to do with Psalm 121. So I'm just going to share it with you here. So if you go to Psalm 121, you'll see how it goes. I 
lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from you, maker of heaven, creator of the earth. Oh, how I need you, Lord. You are my only hope. You're my only prayer. So I will wait for you to come and rescue me. Come and give me life. I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from you, maker of heaven, creator of the earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going in and your coming out from this time forth and forevermore. Oh, how I need you, Lord. You are my only hope, you're my only prayer. So I will wait for you to come and rescue me, come and give me life. I lift my eyes up to the mountains where does my help come from my help comes from you maker of heaven creator of the earth <laughs> so that <clears throat> I love how people have have taken taken the psalms and they have uh written songs so that we can remember them and it really helped me to uh learn and memorize that. Let's let's look at our markings now. Now you don't have to read, Suji. <laughs> okay. Uh Adrian. Okay. Uh, I will lift my eyes to the mountains. So that's a place. From where my heart comes. Okay, so where is also one of those uh, geographical words. I'm not going to necessarily mark it, but just to point it out that uh, these are the things when we're asking the who, what, where, when, why, how questions. Um, that's now, isn't this interesting? I don't think in the King James Version <clears throat> that it, it puts it as a question. I lift up my eyes from, and, and then here, from where shall my help come from? That's a question. It's got a question mark. But I don't think it does in, C, in the King James Version. Let me look at it. I'll look it up. I'll look up if you want. Okay. Because it has a little bit of a different meaning if it is a question or if it isn't a question. Uh, the question is obvious, like the, that, that the uh, psalmist is saying, where's my help going to come from? Um, okay, so that's verse 2? Yeah, uh, verse 1. No, no, verse 1. 
Okay, it just says a, a, a song of decrees. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, comma, from whence cometh my help. Yes, so that has a different meaning, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so in that sense, it says my help is coming from the mountains. And what is he, what is mm -hmm. he, why would he refer that? From the mountains? Because verse two says my help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and earth. Okay, good. All right, so Adrian, let's go through our marking then. So help, help, we're marking that like salvation. Oh, yes. <clears throat> and uh, it, actually, from the mountains. So if you did a study on mountains um, <clears throat> throughout Scripture, like if you just made note of that throughout Scripture, when when the Bible talks about the mountains, the mountains of Israel, the uh, there are there is a different kind of significance that I'm not picking up, but I just know in the back of my mind that there is there that that would be an interesting study. To a top well, because study. then it comes the reference of rock and our stability, and Christ is our rock and mm -hmm. unmovable and steadfast, mm -hmm. right? So the mm -hmm. imagery there mm -hmm. probably ties in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse two, Adrian. My help comes. Yep, help. From the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Okay, so now here we have uh, this marking for Lord is in all caps, so that is uh, the Jehovah name. But also he is making reference to Elohim, our creator, right? Creator God who made heaven and earth. Okay, so I'm marking my earth, the earth. How do I mark earth? My goodness. All right. All right, now this maker who helps us, what what is in verse 3? He mm -hmm. will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Okay, so keeps, that's the same as we're marking salvation. Why is it important to know this? He's never asleep. He won't miss a thing. What is the, what is the reference to f having your foot slip? Well, it could be uh, if you slip, you're going to fall, you're going to get hurt, dislodged. Hmm. For some reason, I had the picture of a pilgrim in the Pilgrim's Progress, you know, slipping mm -hmm. into a ditch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sliding off the path into a ditch. Here. Remember, you're traveling. You're traveling, right? Mm-hmm. Right, because this is a song of ascents. We're we are going. We're going up to the temple to worship. And God is not asleep. All right, uh, verse four. Behold, he who keeps. Mm -hmm, there's that word again. Israel. Will neither slumber nor sleep. Okay, so now why is this going to be important to us as believers? Because we, none of us here are of Israel. I find this very comforting because I'm thinking during the night when the rest of us on our side of the world are sleeping, God is taking care of the other side, which is fully lit, right? Mm -hmm. God is taking care of Sushi and her people. But now I know he's also taking care of me while I'm sleeping because he doesn't sleep. Mm -hmm. So we see a, a historical reference here in a way. Um, because who, who made Israel, Israel? God. Mm-hmm. He so, chose them. Yep. 
And so we, the whole Old Testament is about God's dealing with Israel. And up to this point in history for the psalmist, um, we have seen in previous psalms that he has talked about the different ways that God has intervened on the nation's behalf, but also on his behalf personally, right? And so for us, we have all that history that he who keeps Israel keeps us. And uh, that is very precious to me because um, as Gentiles, we were outside the covenant. We were outside. God had us in mind all along. It's not that he didn't, but we weren't part of that covenant system. We weren't part of that, that uh, all of that. But now in Christ, we are. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and we can read all the history of all the great and mighty things that God did for Israel. And we know that this same God keeps us. That's very, very precious. Okay, now there's a break. And it starts verse 5. Adrian? The Lord mm -hmm. is the Lord <coughs> keeper. Mm -hmm. And we're marking that. The Lord mm -hmm. is your shade on your right hand. Okay. Right hand. We've been marking right hand, haven't we? Mm hmm so I'm just underlining the Lord. <coughs> and I've gone over to uh, uh, the Blue Letter Bible again. <clears throat> and I am going to pull that up on the screen, hopefully. And we can have a look at this together, maybe. Oops, I got it up a little too high. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, the Lord is your keeper. I'm just going to look that up. Oops, <laughs> I'm in the right, wrong place. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your keeper. And that's what the word is right there. I'm going to pop that open. Because for some funny reason. Oh, and I hope this isn't sacrilegious. But for some funny reason, <laughs> the zoo came to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay to keep okay so keep guard observe give heed to keep watch protect save life watchman hmm that's that's to watch observe retain treasure up and now this says in memory so god keeps us in mind in his memory hmm isn't that isn't that great okay so now i'm coming back to us here just, I was just curious about that. Yeah, and you guys got to put up with my curiosity. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Lord is your shade on your right hand. Well, I mean, we could take that a little <clears throat> bit too literally, right? This is my right hand. It's not that he's shading my right hand. What, <clears throat> what is that saying? That he's my shade on my right hand. I think, well, when you think of Prophet Jonah and in the heat of the desert, I mean, 45 degrees is, is unbearably hot at any, for anybody, God provided shade. And that was something you would need if you're traveling through the desert. Indeed. On your right hand. Good. Adrian, can you come back to here? Oh, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Northern noon by night. Oh, okay, start again from the sun. Oh, yeah, the sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. So those are both time references, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're, okay, so if you're, okay, this is, to me, if you're living far away like maybe this psalmist is, because he's in the north, this is a big camping trip, isn't it? Hang on, is that my house? Yeah. Just a sec. I got to go offline. I don't know what's wrong. Okay. All right. I'm just going to... He's got an alarm going off over there. 
So I'm uh, so I have just muted you all. Um, so um, here we are. So I was just going to say that uh, for the people traveling, it's like a camping trip. It's like you have to take you have to take enough food for the journey. You have to take enough water for the journey. There probably aren't like uh, Motel 6s along the way or, or holiday inns that you can go to. I'm going to put that back on and see if her, she got that. <laughs> An alarm going off. Okay. Um, so, so uh, yeah, so when the full moon comes out, um, that's that can be very cold. Because it's been proven that that uh, moonlight is cold. If if you so when you get to a full moon, you've got your coldest nights. And the sun, as uh, Liz was saying, you know, if you're in the desert or you're walking through that kind of region, maybe it's not desert, but it's uh, closer to the equator. That uh, you know, it can be very hot and smiting. Smiting is hitting. So the moon won't hit you by day, the and the and the or by night, I should should say in the sun by night. Okay, uh verse seven, Adrian. The Lord mm -hmm. will protect you. Okay, so I'm marking that like salvation. From all evil. Mm -hmm. All, all evil. He mm -hmm. will keep your soul. You know... <clears throat> That we live in a time where um, we count on people obeying the law, like driving the right speed and stopping at stop signs and stoplights and and all of that. <clears throat> but I was thinking about how Canada was and how North America was in the pioneering days. You know, there was no police force. And so people always had to uh, watch out for robbers and thieves and, and thugs along the highways if they were traveling. The whole, if you study the history of how the mail uh, came about and how they transferred money from bank to bank, for example, if they transfer, because it wasn't paper money, it was gold. And so you would be set upon by thieves. And how would you protect yourself, you know? But here it's saying, the Lord will protect you from all evil. And we're talking about traveling while you're traveling, while you're camping out alongside the road. He will keep your soul. And for me, keeping my soul is even more important in a sense. Because sometimes the things that terrify us the most are the things that happen. Well, let's say the things that might happen to our family or you know, the people that we love, our friends, or, you know, the things that terrify us on the inside. The Lord will keep our soul. Okay, what's it say in verse 8? The Lord mm -hmm. will guard. Are we going to mark that the same in salvation? Yep. Okay. You're going out and you're coming in. That's from a this time forth and forever. So that's a so the going out and coming in, that is a geographical location, and here it is. We're talking about ascent, so I'm assuming it's, it has to do with um, that you're going up to Jerusalem and then you're coming back. Uh, what happens, uh, what feast do we have, um, particularly where people are camping out? The Passover? No, when, the Feast of Booths. Yes, the Feast of Booths. So, uh, 
I, and I was just describing while you were uh, ha handling your uh, alarm that um, in the days that this was written, people didn't have, there might have been wayside inns. There probably were. There were obviously people who had, uh, who were publicans so that they had places for people to stay, but not everybody would. You might be uh, traveling in a caravan and be camping out under the stars. And the Lord will go uh, guard your going out and your coming in. How long? From this time forth and forever. From this time forth. So that, um, I think, um, when it says for, from this time forth, that, that means right now, from now, right now, because we live now, right? We, we don't live yesterday. That was already gone. We're living now, and then the forevermore goes on into the future. So we learn quite a few things about the Lord here. Let's, let's list what we learn about the Lord. Um, what do we learn in verse 2? This is just a review. Suji, what do we learn about the Lord in verse 2? Verse 2? Mm -hmm. My help comes from the Lord. Who made heaven and earth? Yeah, so we learn, we learn basically two things that that's where we get our help from. And who is he? He's our the create. Yeah, and who is he? He's the creator mm -hmm. of heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. And then in verse two, we learn something. We learn two more things about the Lord. In verse two, in I verse three, verse, two. verse three, you will not allow your food to sleep. He who keeps you will not slumber. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, that he could be protect. Yes, protect mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't even sleep to protect us. Mm -hmm. Is anybody else feeling so secure like I am? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and what do we learn about the Lord in uh, verse 4? Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> so there were certain times of the year that the Lord commanded his people to go up to Jerusalem. Um, I, I'm, I'm not bringing that to mind when it was, but we do know that that's a, a fact. And so to, if you know that God is keeping you and he's not sleeping, that he's protecting you the whole time. Okay. And uh, what do we learn about him in verse five? The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. Mm-hmm. So when you think about shade, I'm throwing this out to anybody out there. What? Okay, well, it's getting to be summer here now. And I just put up one of my shade areas. Because I have a really nice back deck, but I can't use it for most of the day because it's too hot. The sun comes in there. Yeah. So having the shade, that's that's a comfort. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't live in a tropical zone here, but still, if the sun is too hot, it's too hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. And so then we learn that in verse 6 as well. Okay, what do we learn about the Lord in verse 7? The Lord will protect you from all evil, and mm -hmm. he will keep your soul. Yes. So like I, I talked a little bit about that, but he will keep your soul. What is that indicating to us in terms of our salvation? It is forever. It's eternal. That's right. protect you from all evil. Okay, so now I have to make an argument then. Uh, evil has come to my way. 
to do damage in my life. What does that mean about this verse? When it says the Lord will protect you from all evil. I think he will carry you through whatever the challenges are. And he has. I'm not. I'm not denying that. I'm just saying that there's. There might be a, a skeptic out there that says, "Wait a minute. What about all this evil that's going on in the world?" Let's let's talk about that for a minute, Liz. When someone says, "What about the evil that's happening to this person, that person, or the other person, or the people out there in, uh, you know, who are dying of starvation?" <clears throat> well, lots of evil happened to Jesus, and uh, the Father helped him through it, and that's our role model. So we are not promised a perfect life, we're not promised an easy life, and we're certainly not promised a fanciful life. So, But we are promised that he'll be with us, he'll walk us through whatever challenges we face and whatever falls our way. And it appears that some people are luckier than others, but that's not the case. It's just God is molding us as he sees fit in his way. Mm. That's part of our obedience to him mm. and submissiveness to him and his will. And uh, mm. also what came to me was that we know that we are each unique, uniquely created human beings. And, um, you know, so uh, I have in my life, I have the things that are, that are good and bad that are part of me, but the Lord gives me lessons specific to me that are to cause me to draw, to draw close to him. Mm -hmm. And they won't be the same things as for you or for Suji or for Adrienne, right? Right. They won't right. be the same things. We each have, we're individual, we're unique. There's nobody on the earth, never has been, nor will be another one like who is us each of us. And so, yeah, the Lord knows the kind of lessons that he gives to each of us to make us essentially more like Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. That is the challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And keeping, he keeps our soul. What about verse eight? We, what do we learn, Suji? The Lord will guard you are going out and you're coming in from this time forth and forever. Mm -hmm. Which means he will protect us forever, wherever we go. Isn't that wonderful? Now, Suji has been around the world. <laughs> she's been to Canada. She's been, And here she is in, have you been to Japan? Yes, I have lived there for five years. Yeah. So you have been in different parts of the world. And uh, uh, Liz just got back home from Greece. She was in Greece for a wow. couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've been to North Africa. I've been up north. I've been to the United States. I haven't really been west. But, uh, yeah, the Lord has mm -hmm. protected our coming and our going. So... That just reminds me of that, my Yuhu passage in First Peter. I'm going to read it. I got to read this first. I love this passage because it's a Yuhu that God gave to me when I was afraid of going to Toronto. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was afraid to go by myself. I was afraid to go on the train. I was afraid to go on the subway. I was afraid to take an Uber. I was afraid to get a taxi. I was afraid and I was having a chat with him. And he gave me a little yoo-hoo, and this is what it says. I'm going to read the whole passage because it, it, I don't want to take it out of context. Where but are you reading? I'm in First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his great mercy, has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to obtain a, an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In other words, we are protected by the power of God 
to to for all of the things he means for us to accomplish and for him to accomplish in us until we go home to meet him. So just having that, you who are protected by the power of God, uh, spoken into my mind, has given me great courage to do whatever it is he's called to me. And I don't know, I've, I've been called to do something that, like Suji was shy to dance and have it recorded. I have a, a performance coming up later in the summer that I am very shy of and afraid of, but I know that the Lord is going to help me. And that is to play piano in front of people. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, yeah, as part of a, of a play that I'm in. But this is true for all of us. Whatever he's called us to do, each of us individually in our own world, he's given us his power to do. And uh, that might be, that might mean raising children at a time. That might mean caring for uh, a sick spouse. That might mean caring for elderly parents. Um, That might mean, I don't know. There are many things that God has called us to do in the world that we're in. So we don't have to worry about what other people have to do. We don't have to worry about the other people's gifts or how he's crafting them in the image of Jesus. We just have to be faithful where we are. So we've come to the end of the day. I hope this has been as much a blessing to you as it has been to me, and I think that I'm going to have to find the rest of this recording and stitch together. <laughs> I have no idea how much got missed. Uh, I am, I don't want to learn how to do video editing right at this time of life because it is uh, summertime and I want to be in the garden. <laughs> but, but, well, can I just say one last thing? Well, yes. So Psalm 121 is considered this, the traveler's psalm. So whenever we were traveling, mom would always sit us down. She would read this chapter or this psalm, and then we would pray for God's blessing on our trip. Oh, isn't that marvelous? Yeah. That's marvelous. Yeah. The traveling psalm. Well, we are going to have more of these Song of Ascents. I don't know how many more they, I didn't really count them up. Uh, But they are. A lot of them, aren't there? Uh, what did, just wait. Yeah. So they go to a, 134. 134 yep. is the last one. Yeah. So that's what we're going to be looking at for the next few sessions. Yeah. Anyway, let's pray together. Thank you, Lord, that we can have confidence in you because we trust you because we have received your gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And that we now know that you are keeping us in the same way as you are keeping Israel. That everything that you have promised um, has already come about. And there are things yet that you have promised that will come about. We don't have to be shaken by the events of our world. We don't need to be shaken by the uh, attacks of our enemy who comes against us with deceitful tongues to hurt us because we know that no matter what we are secure in you and we shall go home to be with you, whether it is, uh, what seems early or what it's, what seems later. We know that we are yours eternally and you are guarding our going in and our coming out from this time forward and forever. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to worry about, um, shade or shelter We that you are looking out for us in every watch of the day and night. And so thank you, Lord, for all of your goodness to us. Thank you for this time together in our study. May everyone go home with a blessing. I'm asking this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right, you folks out there in YouTube land, I'm going to sign off, but my girls are going to stay in the room for a minute and we'll see you in the next one. God bless. Mm -hmm.